Turnitin for postgraduates. Postgraduates have a section in their ClickUp where they can access Turnitin that is for themselves and not departmental. So if they go through ClickUp, ClickUp is an online platform used for hybrid and online learning. ClickUp requires an internet connection to work, but does not work on Internet Explorer, preferably Chrome or Safari is also, is also a, a viable option. ClickUp can be accessed through the UP website by logging into your UP login or by searching clickup.up.ac.za or through the Connect portal granting students zero rated access during the lockdown. Access through ClickUp. Turnitin is a tool used to show one similarities so that one can improve on them. Postgraduates can access their personal Turnitin through their ClickUp. The following method cannot be used for any official submissions. Departments must set up their own official Turnitin with their own specific requirements and filters and provide the students with the link to it. This link, the departmental link, is usually made available in the student's ClickUp under that specific course module. It is also important to note that Turnitin is just the software and cannot recognize common knowledge or a student's field of studies jargon. They need to keep this in mind before submitting. So this slide shows a little roadmap. I will be showing you practically, however. I'm just going to use one of these links. So through the ClickUp homepage, students will need to click on organizations up here in the top left, which will take them to this page. In the search bar, they'll need to search the word support. Click go. And they will find two organization IDs. The first ID says 2013, that one has been outdated and is no longer in use. So students will need to use the 2020 organization. They will click on that and it will take them to this page. However, if a student has not yet enrolled, here to the left under this little block, there will be an enroll button. For example, in the slide, down here, there'll be like a little green plus with the word enroll. They will need to click on that enroll and follow some easy steps and they will then find themselves enrolled and at, on, on this page. The main focus for today's webinar, however, will be taking place on Turnitin Workshop Self-Study and Explore. Where students will be spending most of their time is in Turnitin submission of own academic writings. But before they can focus on that, they need to work through the Turnitin Workshop Self-Study and Explore. Here, if a student works through this, they should have a basic understanding of Turnitin. In the Self-Study and Explore page, there's a cute little video it's not English, but it is visual enough to get the message across. It's very cute. It's five minutes and it's quite lighthearted. It explains exactly what plagiarism is and the consequences thereof. Also in the Turnitin Workshop Style Study and Explore, there is a demo document that the students can download. This document is purposefully formatted incorrectly with incorrect quotes, incorrect paraphrasing, specifically for the purpose of this exercise. The second step, they will need to click on view and complete, which will then take them to this little window. In this window, it will show them the assignment title. They always need to make sure that they're uploading the correct assignment. It gives you dates, start, due, and post. Because this is the demo, the dates are quite far into the future. However, if this is an official Turnitin document, the dates will be more accurate. The starting date is when the submissions can start being active. The due date is when the submissions need to be finalized. And the post date is a short period for late submissions. The student will then click on Submit. 
Here they will be asked to give the submission title. This title needs to be as close as, if not exactly the same as the document's title to avoid confusion. If a student is unsure as to what they can upload, they can click here on what can I submit and it will tell them the requirements for a single file upload. The file must be less than 100 megabytes. The files must have at least 20 words of text. The maximum paper length is 800 pages and there are specific file types that are allowed. Now not meeting these requirements is almost impossible. It's been set up that way on purpose. However, if the student's document is too big, they are allowed to remove the front matter, which is everything before the first chapter. So the table of contents, the acknowledgements, all the list of figures and tables, all those things before chapter one. And they're also allowed to remove everything after the bibliography, so the appendices. It is important to note the file types that are accepted, especially if you're a Mac user. I think it's very important that students are encouraged to, to make use of the service where we provide them with Office. The students will then need to choose the document from where they saved it. If it's on their computer, they'll say save, uh, choose from this computer. If it's on Google Drive or on Dropbox, and they will then need to click on upload to finally upload the document. They will then be shown this screen they are being reminded of exactly what they are submitting with a first page of the document and some details about it. They need to make sure that this is correct before confirming the submission as resubmissions can take longer to generate. And this is also used so that students can't use the excuse that they've uploaded the incorrect document. If the student is happy, completely satisfied with all of this information, they can click on confirm. They'll then be shown the exact same screen. However, it'll say, congratulations, the submission is complete. This is their digital receipt. This is also emailed to them. And this acts as proof of submission. But just a reminder that for official Turnitin submissions, this does not count. If they are happy once again, they will return to the assignment list. Clicking on that brings them back to the screen where they will then be told what the, the title is, they will be reminded of the dates, and there will be the similarity score. The similarity score does not always appear immediately and may say processing. This is dependent on network. The student will need to refresh the page frequently until the percentage shows. In the demo document, the submit button will be grayed out as they cannot resubmit. However, in their submission of their own papers, there will be a resubmit button as shown down here. They can upload there as many times as they want. Departmental submissions, however, may sometimes withhold their report until the due date, not allowing for resubmissions. This is all departmental specific. Now, understanding the similarity score. Students will need to click on the similarity score to bring them to the feedback studio. This tends to become very overwhelming as there are many colors, everything is highlighted. But the main focus here to understand all of this are these little blocks down here to the right. The blue block is usually feedback from the lecturer. The red blocks are the similarity or match overview, the match breakdown and the filters and settings in student view. There's usually a little purple block as well between the gray and the red. This is for language editing. And the gray is for downloading and document stats. When one of the colored blocks are black, it means that they are deactivated and Turnitin will ignore the setting. If they are in color, Turnitin will not ignore the setting. It is advised that in this personal Turnitin view, that everything be turned off except the red block. This is what affects your similarity score the most. You turn it off by simply clicking on it. Just click on the color and you'll see it turn black. Now, for a further breakdown, the student will need to click on their percentage to show the matching sources. This will open this page 
And any text from the Turnitin databases will show here where it finds it online. And this corresponds with the highlighted text in the document. So number one is red. So that is this paragraph that's highlighted in red. And that shows that it adds 13% to the similarity score. If they click on this link, it'll open this little window down here with this little icon of the two pages. And if the student clicks on that icon, it takes them straight to the source where all these words have been taken from. Chapters like methodology will cause high similarity due to terminology, but this does not mean it was plagiarized. Again, Turnitin cannot always distinguish between jargon and terms. Lecturers and supervisors can, however, exclude this in their official Turnitin submission links. This all just proves why this cannot be used in official submissions. Students can then click on the filters and settings icon over down here, where they can then play around and see what is contributing to their similarity scores. Here they can set whether Turnitin should exclude the quotes in the document or the bibliography when generating the similarity score. This is not a method of reducing the score, but rather to only see the similarity in the paraphrased sections. If it is allowed to directly take a certain amount of words from a source without paraphrasing, it can also be set here. For example, some departments allow students to use sentences or phrases of five words or less. So the student will then put in five words here and turn it in will ignore those phrases. Applying these changes will have immediate effect changing the similarity score. In the official submission link provided, this will not change in lecture review because otherwise students would be able to just get away with it. When it comes to quotes, quotes must be proper quotes to be affected by this filter, meaning they need to use double quotation marks. A quote should only be one idea, so only one paragraph. Quotes don't have bullets but rather list using commas or semicolons. For the bibliography to be affected by this filter, the bibliography heading must be set or formatted as a heading style in Word. This will not work for references added as footnotes or endnotes. Thus, this will add to the similarity score. The download button the gray little button at the bottom of all of that, allows students to download their digital receipt or the document with and without feedback or similarities. So the current view refers to the view of the highlighted text. The digital receipt is that other page showing that they've submitted or the originally submitted file, which is the document they have uploaded. Once a student has become familiar with the self-study and explore section and they've played through and they've become comfortable, they can then go to turn it in submission of own academic writings. And here you can submit the whole paper, a proposal, an article, or you can submit chapter by chapter. They can resubmit here as many times as they'd like, but again, it is important to remember that this is for their own personal use and is not an official method for submitting. And that is the basics of Turnitin. There are many, many things that are very departmental specific, such as the similarity score percentage. Students generally ask, what is the limit? That is up to their supervisors and up to their departments. I've had some students who say that it cannot be more than 3%. I know that the drama departments is no more than 10%. A lot of it is just familiarity. And I thank you so much.